All right, so for number six, we have 7k squared plus 9k. When you see a binomial, you really want to be looking for two things. Two things. Difference of perfect squares, but even before that, you want to be looking for a GCF. All right? Difference of perfect squares only occur if they're, well, it's in the title. If there's a difference, as in subtraction, and there are two things. Okay, so we got two things, but those two things have to be perfect squares. All right, some of this is a perfect square, but we didn't meet the first condition. All right, so if we're looking at a difference of perfect squares, so difference of two perfect squares, Each one of these things is a condition. If you can't give a check mark to every one of them, except the of, then you can't you can't use that approach. All right? So here it's not a difference. All right? There is two things. Neither of which is a perfect square. If I had check check check, then I would go using the difference of perfect squares method but I don't have that, so there's gotta be something else. All right, so not a difference of perfect squares. All right, so there's gotta be something else. It's not a trinomial. Trinomials are probably the easiest thing to identify. If there's three terms, it's a trinomial. There's only two terms, so it's not a trinomial. But even before that, we should be looking for the simplest way to factor, which is the GCF, all right? So numerically, there, is, there isn't a non-trivial number that'll divide evenly into uh, seven and nine. Basically, it's only the trivial case, it's only the number one. Give me two numbers that divide evenly, or I'm sorry, not even two. Give me a number that divides evenly into seven and nine. You'd say one, I'd say that's not helpful, right? Because it doesn't, do anything more than just be a trivial response. All right, so, but in terms of the variables, the GCF is always the one that's raised to the lower power. All right, so I have k to the second, k to the first, so I take the k to the first. All right, I divide each term by k to the first. Keep the base, subtract the exponents. So 7k to the first. Now, when we divide 9k to the first by 9k to the first, you can keep the base, subtract the exponents, but you could also look at it and say k to the first divided by k to the first, they're the same thing, so you just wipe out. Either way, if you subtract k to the first minus, uh, divided by k to the first would be k to the zeroth, which cancels to one anyway, all right? So that gives me a nine. And so this would be my final answer, except I'd want to write it without the powers. The other thing that people were struggling with were um, trinomials where the leading coefficient was, a, was not a one. And that could take on a couple of different forms. Sometimes there's a GCF, and if you pull out that GCF, it makes things much easier, but in this case, there isn't. Right, because there's no number that will divide evenly into 2, 17, and 21. All right, so there goes that idea. But what we can do is list the possible factors of 2 and 21. And then start mixing and matching. All right. Fortunately, the two is prime. So that means that there's only, that's the only possible pairing that we could have is a two and a one. And since in every situation that we've dealt with, we've always gone with the positive one and it's worked out. There's no reason to think it would be anything else, uh, anything other than that. In this case, the trinomial is entirely positive though. So, 
I wouldn't even consider any of the negative cases. Yeah, you might find some combination of negative values that make it work out, but then that's gonna introduce a GCF and we don't necessarily want that. We definitely don't want that. And so just kind of reading the situation, you look at it and say, well, I don't want the negatives. Why? Because where are the negatives in there? They're, they're all positive. All right. So I'm gonna open my framework here. I got some Bs. I'm gonna get my arc diagram going. And I'm gonna try a combination, something that I think makes sense. All right, somehow I gotta to get to a 17 though. All right, and the misconception that a lot of folks were having throughout the day, not necessarily in this class or just in this class, is we're not looking for the two numbers to, to add to 17. We're looking for the outer and inner products to add to 17, all right? And that's very easy to lose sight of, all right? So if I assume a one and a, and a two, so one here and a two there, then it's really just a matter of four possible combinations, four trials, and I'll have my answer if it's factorable. And if it's not factorable, I'll know that in four trials. So, but you could kind of streamline it if you, if you, kind of reason this out in your mind a little bit, all right? Because, for example, if I put, like, I'll just tell you right now, I would never put the 21 here, all right? The reason why is if I put the 21 as one of those middle terms, it's going to get multiplied by the 2. That's going to make a 42, which is nowhere near the 17 that I want, all right? So, I know that it could be 1 and 21 or 21 and 1. I've just eliminated, just through reasoning, I've eliminated one of those possible combinations, well, permutations. So if anything, I would try the 1 here and the 21 here. All right, give that a shot. So I get 2B and 21B. There's no way I can add those values add or subtract them in any way and get a 17 as a result. So that can't be right. So now I've just eliminated this possible pairing from contention. All right, so then I look at the three and the seven and I say, all right, well, I could put the three first or the seven first, but I wanna get close to 17. So maybe I should put the seven here cause that's gonna get me to a 14. If I put the three here, seven times two is going to give me a 14 then three more will get me to the 17 that i'm looking for as long as they're both positive this will check out all right so it's systematic it's just a matter of going through the possible combinations permutations arrangements it takes a little time but the the method works it, assuming it's factorable. If it's not factorable, it'll still work just to tell you that it's not factorable. Which is kind of aggravating because it, it means that you typically have to go through every one of those combinations in order to realize that, but you know, that's part of the fun, I guess. Number 10 has a little bit of both, has a GCF and it also is a trinomial. All right, so if you struggle with finding GCFs, you can use a calculator approach. All right, in the math menu under NUM, the GCF function, and GCD function, we use it for GCF. 28, I mean, they're all even, so you could think two, but four is a better one. Is there a better one than four? Who knows? You know, so two and, uh, 28 and 16, Four is the G GCD between those two numbers. So then I would see what's the GCD between four and 80. It's gonna be the four, but I'll do it anyway. All right, so we know that numerically, the GCF is gonna be four. Now in terms of the variables, there's an N in each term. So I'm just gonna grab the N that's raised to the lowest power. 
the lowest power is 2, so 4n to the second. So each term gets divided by 4n to the second. So divide the numbers, keep the base, subtract the exponents. So 7n to the second, 4n to the first, So then minus 20 and the n to the second divided by n to the second would just cancel away, all right? So now, I mean, it would be great if we were done with the problem, but at, at this point, we, we have a trinomial on our hands and we have to investigate this. Now, because the leading coefficient is prime, we're now at the point where we can assume the seven n and the 1n. Whether you want to put the 1n first or the 7n, that's up to you. But there's no other way in which you can get to a product of 7. All right, same thing with the 2. I mean, you could get there with negatives, but we've already established that using negatives would overly complicate the situation. All right, so I got my 4n squared. Now, if I'm just looking at that negative 20 off on the side, because I've already gotten the leading coefficient accounted for, it's going to streamline things a little bit, but 20's got a bunch of factors, so, you know, we still got a little bit of work ahead of us, but it'll be a little bit more manageable than, let's say, a situation where the leading coefficient was like 16, you know, lots of different possible combinations for the leading coefficient as opposed to uh, just a, a something simple like a 7. All right, so 2, negative 10, negative 2, positive 10, 4, negative 5, negative four, positive five, and then you start working your way back, right? So these are the combinations that we need to try in either order. That's what people lose sight of. It's not just the order that you see here. It could go the other way around as well, all right? Now, since I'm looking for a small sum, that's, that sum is a four, that middle term is a four, so that means the sum I'm looking for of my outer and inner products has to be a four, has to be a small value. I don't want my seven being multiplied by a large number, all right? So any instance out of all of these possible scenarios involving a large number, which is pretty much all of them, I would wanna have the smaller number in the other binomial the larger number would be grouped with the seven. All right, because for example, if I put a negative 20 here, that's gonna get me a negative 140. That's nowhere near the four and it's of no help. All right, same thing would happen with the negative 10, the negative five, the positive 20, the positive 10, the positive five. So all of those numbers, when I try them, those should go in with the seven because those would get multiplied by the one. All right, so for example, I'll, I'll go with the first possible combination here. I would say, if I want to put the negative 20 here, negative 20, positive 1, that would get me a negative 20, a positive 7, which is a negative, negative 13. All right. A whole lot better than a, a negative 140, but still not very helpful. All right. So then you kind of move on and see what's going on. But with that idea in mind that, okay, well, if I put in the positive 20, it's not gonna change anything except for the sign of that middle number, all right? So hopefully we've kind of gathered that where when we try a negative 20 and a one versus a positive 20 and a negative one, the only thing that differs is the middle sign, not the number itself, all right? We just came up with a negative 13. If I put the 20 here, and the negative one here, I get a 20 and a negative seven, that's a positive 13. So we can eliminate two possible combinations, permutations, in one shot, all right? Just because if we don't get to a four or a negative four, then we're not in the right neighborhood, all right? So then I would try something like, I'll put the negative 10 here and the positive two here, all right? That's gonna give me 
a negative 10, and that's going to give me a 14, and that's, that's our winner. All right, negative 10 N, 14 N, and there it is. All right, those will add to a 4 N. But let's say I accidentally used the, uh, the positive 10 and the negative 2. I would have come up with a negative 4 N, in which case I would say, all right, we'll just change the signs. I'm not going to change the numbers. The numbers are good. Change the signs, and that would be our fix. All right, so there are little, little tricks of the trade like that that streamline things. All right. There was a problem that the other class asked for. I can do that. Um, I think it was number 15. Yeah. 15, definitely. So you go through the technique of looking for a GCF. I mean, numerically, I mean, you go through the process. You know, again, with the calculator, GCD, math, NUM, scroll on down till you find it, 9 and 73, only the trivial case, do it again, so we do the 1 and the 70, I mean, the fact that the first pair only gave you the 1 meant that there was not going to be a numerical GCF, but you can try it anyway, go through the motions. GCF here is only going to be, if you look at the numbers, uh, I'm sorry, the letters, there's a common R across the board, so GCF is R. So divide out the R. We get 9P squared, it's not a P, 9P squared plus 73P plus 70. All right, so pretty tricky case. It's entirely positive, so that's something. But if we look at the leading coefficient, that leading coefficient has factors of, well, we're looking for factors of 9, which would be 1 and 9, 3 and 3. I'm going to ignore the negatives because the expression is entirely positive. All right, for the 70, 1 and 70, 2 and 35, 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, 5 and 14, 6 doesn't work, 7 does, 8 doesn't, 9, 10 does, but then we start working our way backwards. All right, so you got the R on the outside, open our parentheses. We know there's going to be a P here and a P here. Get our outer product set up, our little diagram framework. All right, so we got to make a, take a stab at it, make a guess. Like, is it going to be the one and the nine or the three and the three? The thing about going with the three and three first is that it doesn't impact, the order doesn't matter between the two numbers. So that could be helpful. You know, if I put a three here and a three here, so if I opt for this possible pairing, and then I put a one and 70 here, and that doesn't work, I wouldn't have to change the one with the 70 because it would be the same expression anyway. All right, by the way, I wouldn't even try the 1 in the 70. I wouldn't even try the 2 in the 35 because in either case, I'm multiplying those numbers by 3. All right? If I take a 70 and multiply it by 3, that's going to get me a 210. If I take a 35 and multiply it by 3, that's going to get me 135. And right? those are too far away from 73. 73 is the goal number. All right? So these would be out of, out of commission here. I wouldn't look at those. So I would try the 5 and the 14. So that gives me 15p on the inside, 42p on the outside, which is 57p. It's not too far away, but it's far away enough that it's not acceptable, so gone. So 7 and 10, we'd have 21p and 30p 
that's 51 PE. So what we've done here is we have effectively eliminated three and three as a possible pairing for the leading coefficient, but we did it somewhat efficiently, right? So now we go on to the one and the nine. All right, I already got the seven and 10 in there, so I might as well leave it. Maybe I'll work the bottom up. One and the nine. So, oh, actually that's cheating, so let me not do that. So one and the nine, it could be arranged in any way you want. It'll just impact where you put the other factors or the other terms to make up the factors. I would never put the 70 here. Actually, I would never put the 70, the 35, or the 14 in this position. Because if I do, the product is going to be too large. If I put a 70 here, I'm going to get a 630. If I put the 35 there, I'm going to get a 315. If I put the 14 there, I mean, that, that one's not terrible, but it's gonna be 131, it's still too far away, all right? So if anything, if I'm gonna do my products, my outer and inner products, I would rather have the 70 here with the one there, all right? So that gave me a seven, oh, I'm sorry, a nine and a 70. It's not too far away, but it's not, it's gotta be exact, so it's no good. So this can't be a possible pairing. the two and the 35, it's not gonna get big enough, quick enough, because this is 18 and this is 35, that's 53. The five and the 14, so we'd have 45 and 14, that's 59. Same idea, it's getting big, but not big enough, fast enough. So then that leads us to the only possible pairing that could work, the, ten, the nine, uh, I can't even talk, the seven and the 10. So if I put the seven here and the 10 there, seven times nine is 63, one times 10 is 10. Finally, at long last, 63 plus 10 will get you to a 73, as long as they're both positive, that would get us to our solution, right? But it takes a while and it's, it's frustrating at times, but it's doable, all right? It just, like I said, it takes a while. Um, there are some shortcuts, but I like to kind of stick with this method for as long as possible because if you can get it using number sense, then it, it puts you at such an advantage going forward in, in terms of your content knowledge. Uh, if, if you have to rely on the shortcuts, then, you know, You'll, you'll, get, you'll get stuff right, but you'll honestly, I, that's, that's why I don't lead with the shortcuts because you'll, you'll get stuff right, you just won't always know why you're getting stuff right. right? And that, that doesn't help, really. I mean, in the long run, it doesn't help, right? So, was there any uh, question that you wanted me to go over? I mean, I've been kind of droning on here. I mean, I'm really skilled at droning on, as you know. You really want to, you know, stuff. You have trouble sleeping. Listening to listen to one of my college videos. Twenty. Twenty. Yes, absolutely. All right. So this one says name four values of B which make the expression factorable. All right. So it's a tricky question because it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's in the critical thinking question section, so it must be. Um, I'm going to change that B to a C though, because you know, like we. We use it as a x squared plus bx plus c. It really doesn't matter. It's just because I'm going to refer to it as a c value repeatedly. And it would kind of make sense for you to know what I'm talking about. Um, just as a general rule, when we're factoring with, with the leading coefficient equal to 1, we're looking for numbers that add, uh, multiply to the c value, but add to the b value. All right. So we're looking for numbers that multiply to C and add to B. 
Right? That's why I changed the, the B to a C. Um, so, make that a C also. If we're following that relationship, norm normally we would start off with the factors of C, but we don't have that luxury here, right? But if the condition is that we have to have numbers that add to B, then all you'd have to do for this question is think of two numbers that add to B, all right? So any two numbers. There's uh, infinitely many correct answers here. So let's say negative 20 and 17. All right, those will add to negative 3. All right, because negative 20 plus 17 equals 3. All right. So if the condition is that the two numbers have to add to the B value and also multiply to the C value, then I would just take those two numbers and multiply them. So then a possible C value would be negative 340. So they're just, they said, name four values of C. So they're just saying, okay, now do that three more times. All right, well, I did one that was kind of complicated, so let's keep it simple now. How about negative four and positive one? Negative four plus one will give you a three. Negative four times one will give you a negative four. All right, so negative four would also work. All right, then we just need two more. So uh, I don't want to go too crazy, but I guess we can get a fraction involved. But we haven't been doing really much with fractions in this yet. So let's, let's put that aside for now. Uh, let's say just negative 5 and 2. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And negative uh, 10 and 7. Negative 10 plus 7 is negative 3. Negative 10 times 7 is negative 70. Yeah, just really any, anything that would work. You know, that's all. Those open ended questions are tricky because it's often the case where it's like, what are they even asking us here? But then once you figure out what they're asking, it's like, oh, okay, I can do that. Yeah. All right, what else? Punctuated by a nice knuckle crack there. Followed by another knuckle crack. No? Nothing else? The other class kept me going to the bell. 11. 11. All right. Good question, number 11. All right, so we get another GCF there. All right, across the, the numerical values, we're not seeing anything, right? But as far as the letters are concerned, I have a B to the first that could be pulled out. All right, so I could divide each term by B to the first. All right, so b to the first sticks around. So 3b squared minus 5b plus 2. The good thing about this problem is that the leading coefficient is prime and so is the c value. All right, so when I'm looking for factors, there's only so many that they're going to be. It, well, really, that's true for any problem, but when you have prime numbers, that's a good thing because that really restricts the number of possible uh, permutations. So uh, one and three, and you could say negative one, negative three. One and two, negative one, negative two. All right, so then we create our framework, B and B. We'll assume the one and three. So then we just have to play around with the one and two. Now, if you look at your trinomial and you see that it's entirely positive, then you'd have no reason to incorporate a negative. That's not the case here. 
So I would be looking at my negative pairings just because I would not want to have my binomials be entirely positive when my trinomial has to have a negative in it somewhere. So in, in those other cases, I was ignoring all the negative stuff. Now I'm saying, well, let's ignore the positive stuff and focus on the negative stuff, all right? Now, it, I, and that's only because I have a negative sign right here. It's like, I want to get a negative in there. If, if everything's positive, how am I going to introduce a negative, all right? So we'll try the negative one and the negative two. So I'd get, first try, negative three B, negative two B. Just with that little bit of reasoning, you're able to jump right to it, but not from any kind of like divine insight, but just by like, well, it can't be the all, it can't be entirely negative, so uh, positive, so let's make sure we get a negative in there. All right, negative three B plus negative two B will give you the negative five B. The only thing you'd have to remember is to bring the B down along for the ride and you'd have your solution. Right. Got time for one more. How about number 19? We did 20, so you might as well do 19. For what values of B is the expression factorable? So for this one, we would want to be looking at the 12 and the possible permutations that would make up the factors of 12. So we'd have 1 and 12, negative 1, negative 12, 2 and 6, negative 2, negative 6, 3 and 4, negative 3, negative 4. And then once you go beyond that, you start repeating. I guess I could write this below it. So since we're looking for two numbers, whenever we're factoring, two numbers that multiply to the C value, but then add to the B value, whatever these pairs of values add up to would be acceptable as a possible value of B. So if I add these two together, I get 13. These two together, I get 8, 7, negative 13, negative 8, negative 7. Any of these values can get popped in for the B and make a factorable expression because it will satisfy the relationship where the two numbers have to multiply to 12, but also add to whatever the B value is. So for example, if I took that eight and I wrote a trinomial out of that, its factors would be x plus two, x plus six, or I'll say x plus six, x plus two, because I already wrote it. The outer and inner products would lead you to an eight x. Six x, two x, that gets you to an eight x. All right, and that would work for any of these numbers. All right, plugged in here. 